Hey everyone, it's Thorne, and in this video I want to think out loud at you, as is my way, about a question that I know that I've been wrestling with for a really long time, and I'm sure lots of you have too. I've seen other folks kind of edge towards this online in conversations that I've had. Um, I want to reflect on the differences between IRL or meet space, meet space, meet space, in real life, as though the internet isn't real life, um, witchcraft communities versus online witchcraft communities, kind of with the central question of, are these things different movements? Um, are they different religions? Are they different spiritualities, traditions, kind of whatever word you want to use, I think, I think it's kind of neither here nor there sometimes. Um, but just re thinking really as broadly as I can, are we talking about two separate groups of people that maybe we should be treating separately? And is that one of the reasons why there's such a disconnect between so much of what happens like at festivals and in-person events and hanging out at like Pagan Pride Day and your own maybe personal like covens and circles and meetups and groves and whatever IRL versus what we see people talking about and caring about and doing on the internet, whether that's Instagram or TikTok or Twitter or whatever. Um, so I just kind of want to reflect on that because I have, I have some thoughts. Um, so first of all, I think that we could, if we wanted to make a really strong case about these being different movements. Um, and I know that we could like, like generational differences are a thing, like growing pains, like I'm an elder millennial with like kind of a deep seated discomfort with my own mortality and like younger people taking over. Okay. And I recognize that about myself. <laughs> um, but I think it might be something more than that just because, um, some of the things that are different strike me as really significant. Um, so for example, um, this is something that I observed when I first started writing for Pathios, which was that um, if you kind of recall in like 2015, 16, 17, I'm sure this happened beforehand, but um, we would all kind of latch on, like as bloggers, we would all kind of latch on to an issue and get really heated about it and everybody would write a blog about it. And then like at the end of the month, I would go to PantheaCon or Free Spirit Gathering or whatever event and nobody would be talking about that. And it took a little while, and I think like set it maybe setting my internet ego down for a second to realize that actually people just like weren't reading blogs <laughs> the way that I think like we kind of thought they were. So like just because something I wrote got a whole bunch of shares doesn't mean didn't mean that like people were actually engaging with it like in my communities. Um, so I would show up at like Pagan Pride Day really anxious to like have conversations about whatever the thing was that was a really big deal on Twitter or whatever, like over the last few months, and people wouldn't know what I was talking about. Um, and that's when I had this inkling that like things were, were different. Um, maybe in a way that I don't think either I didn't notice or maybe was less true, like when the internet first became a thing, like I had a live journal and I had like an AOL homepage when I was a teenager. And like, so I was on the internet, but I was still going to in-person events. And I just don't, I don't know if maybe there were so few of us on the internet that there wasn't as much of a, dis a disconnect. Um, anyway, I don't want to do any analysis quite yet. I just want to point out some of the differences. Um, so it became really clear after I started blogging for larger audiences that I would go to festivals and like the conversations would be completely different. And the same thing would happen like about like about other things, like about um, the terms we were using, um, the, the jargon, right? Um, so like um, one good example, I think, is how the word pagan is used on TikTok versus how it is like when you go to a festival or even just like hanging out on YouTube, I think that like this was a conversation that I had on my Patreon with some friends um, earlier in the year where I pointed out that, you know, a lot of a lot of people coming into witchcraft just don't uh, don't identify as pagans anymore. Like pagan is something that seems seen as being really distinct and even potentially being like really problematic or maybe even old fashioned, etc. Um, and that's partially because folks are reading different texts, too. 
they're not, it's not even just a question of like, oh, there are brand new books that are available. So people aren't reading like the books we were raised with. They're even like reading from different publishers or they're not reading books at all. They're doing things like following TikTokers or YouTubers. They're, they're not consuming the same, the same text, but they're also not consuming them even in the same format. Um, so at that point, We've got like different values, different jargon, like the way we talk about ourselves, um, the texts are different, and then leadership and authority and kind of who we point to as like the leaders in the community are really, are really, really different a lot of the time. So like you'll go to a festival, you the general, you, I, will go to a festival and like it's pretty clear like who the big name pagans are. Like, you know who, like who the names are that everybody talks about. Like people have their entourage, like, like you know who kind of like the pagan community celebrities are. Um, and when you get like onto Instagram, people don't even know who those folks are a lot of the time. And they have completely different people who have just as big of a reach. Um, and here I'm thinking about like, if you remember um, a few years ago with like Instagram and kind of like the development of the influencer when we started talking about content creators and all of these witchcraft influencers appeared and remembering how like kind of deeply horrified like a lot of us were kind of myself included in this sort of like shocked way like this was kind of my first experience I think with like aging in a really significant way other than like the groaning noise I now make whenever I like get out of a chair <laughs> but, but like realizing that like oh these these young people like who who are that who is this person why don't I know them and like it's not even just that I think that hap that's happening to me because I'm older because a lot of the times it's not that these people are younger than me a lot of the times they're the same age the things that are different are the medium and the text and the jargon. Like these are folks who are coming to the movement in really different ways. And that makes a lot of sense because I think now that there are so many more texts, social media means that potentially anybody can have a platform. There are now an infinitely more number of ways for people to come in, learn about witchcraft, develop their own tradition, explore established traditions, practice witchcraft. And that's a really wonderful thing. Um, but it means that there's less and less overlap, I think, between our varied traditions. Um, so anyway, I, I find myself wondering increasingly if one of the reasons why there seems to be such a divide between internet communities and IRL communities isn't just because we're, we're doing different witchcrafts and maybe they're so distinct that we're not even under the same umbrella anymore. Um, I'm thinking about like in the 80s and 90s reading books and how people would define like the word neo-pagan and they would they would say something about like an emphasis on nature or a reverence for the natural world, um, an emphasis on the divine feminine, like the practice of magic. And there was kind of this like bullet bulleted list of things that were in basically every book whether it was a book about wicca or a book about like druidry or some kind of other sort of paganism like there were these points that seemed to that we would use over and over again to kind of solidify ourselves as a movement um and like those things just aren't true anymore um and if those were the things that we were sort of collectively hanging our hats on in the 80s and 90s and earlier but re really I'm thinking about like the publishing boom of the 90s when that all of that stuff seemed to really solidify in like the collective mind like if we don't have those things anymore then are we doing the same religion slash practice slash spirituality slash whatever you want to call it um so there's that I think a strong case could be made where I hesitate though is that I see a lot of the same patterns in, um, I don't want to generalize and, and have you think that I'm just talking about young people. I'm not necessarily talking about young people, although a lot of these folks are young. It's more, it's more about the platform and the audience, like folks on TikTok, folks on Instagram, um, this, this kind of like online generation, like online demographic, whatever, kind of regardless necessarily of how old they are. 
Um, like there's a pattern there that I see that reminds me a lot of what people were doing in the 80s and 90s. Um, I think it's easy for a lot of us to forget today that that publishing boom in the 90s was largely spurred by people who were like, you know, well, fuck this, I'm going to do it for myself. And I'm going to like, I'm going to build my own tradition and I'm going to like find, find the real witchcraft and I'm going to do the authentic thing. And like, we need something that speaks to how people live today. Like that, it really kind of echoes, I think, like what folks are doing today. I think that like the values are different and the methods are different. The medium is different, but I think the impulse is the same. Um, it's really interesting, for example, to watch like on TikTok, for example, people are like, you know, oh, well, I, you know, I really like, I'm not interested in like this particular form of like made up neo-paganism. Like I'm not, I'm not this sort of pagan because I'm not like, I know that like the Robert, the Robert Graves stuff is a myth and like Gerald Gardner made it all up. And there's kind of like this movement away from a constructed paganism towards something that's authentic and it's people looking towards like maybe their own personal heritage or they're looking towards um various like cultural practices like they're trying to explore things that are um that speak to them today and even though like those things are different that impulse to me echoes the same because that's what folks were doing in the 90s too i mean like when buckland and cunningham were writing there's this emphasis on like okay, like people are practicing in covens and it's initiatory and like all of this other stuff, but like, we're gonna go find this thing for ourselves and we're gonna explore something that's like personal and real for us. And I think it's still that same impulse. Um, so in the same sense that I think we could think of them in, as, as different moments, different movements, I think that the impulses behind them are the same. Um, and that's how I think we, we create a continuity where um, there's still this emphasis on like doing it for yourself, getting personal, like the emphasis on the individual, self-knowledge, going out and like, you know, not looking toward an established authority, like people tell you you're supposed to listen to this person, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to myself or I'm gonna listen amongst my peers, I'm gonna be my own authority, like it's very comparable to what folks were doing in the 90s when they when we were all sort of collectively in our bedrooms deciding that we were going to like initiate ourselves into Wicca. Um, so it's, I don't know, like it's just an interesting thing to watch and be a part of. It's a very different movement in a lot of ways, but I think that a lot of the feeling behind it is similar. Um, so anyway, that was a whole lot of words, but differences, continuity, there's a lot there. I think we could make a strong case for either position. Um, I tend to be on the continuity side, um, but it, it gets harder and harder to see sometimes. That's true, and I wonder if that isn't the reason why, why we have so much of what looks like infighting. Anyway, I'd welcome all of your thoughts. I hope you all are well, and I will see you next time.